Yes, thanks for having me here. Um, we have done three waves of the data set. Uh, three waves, uh, we start 2009 and then first time we, we went into the field the first time in 2000, 2011 and, 2015, and 2015 we have more than 40,000 households. This is the largest non-governmental survey in China and I think anywhere, uh, in the, anywhere in the world. For each province, we have the list of per capita GDP per county that's available. And then we basically decide how many counties. We have 14% of the Chinese counties in young average in each, each, um, on each province. So, and, and then after joining the counties, you can go to the National Bureau of Statistics website, find communities, the list of the communities in China. We randomly draw about four communities each in each from the national from the NBS website. So beyond that, there's no list. So they took my neighborhood people took my interviewers to knock the door of each of the household, tell the same thing of the households. So household people then would they at least have an initial trust of okay these are at least legitimate. You can you can understand this is very difficult to understand. Just to get the number right, or get the vacancy rate right, is, is controversial. We go to each household, we ask how many houses you have, then we ask, you know, are the houses to be rented out, are the houses to be used for some purpose, etc., etc. So this becomes, so Chinese household, obviously, when you to go to the detail, it's very complicated uh, how the houses are used. It's basically, the big number would be 54 million units, six billion square meter. The houses are not, at least not used though, are vacant. Second house by owner. So this is, um, this, this two are most, contro in, in most controversial in China. Almost all countries count it as vacant. So they just use it. So, you know, this is, uh, if income doubled, you know, you richer household. This is control everything, okay, this is marginal effect. The control for, and then you're going to have higher probability of having vacant house. Uh, this is a uh, we believe it's using a collateral for, for loans. So own a business if you own a business, and you can have a much much higher vacancy vacant houses. So it's related to the utility purpose, you know, culture, and then uh, the the investment purpose. If uh, housing by 5%, 4 by 5%, 17% of the vacant houses will be lower than purchase price. If by 10%, 20% of the ho vacant houses will be lower than purchase We thought this put quite a bit of pressure to the market. Between 2000 and 2010, 70 million additional families in the, in the city. That's census. No controversies on that. From 2000 to 2013, net increase of the 70 million units of housing. So they said you can't have 50 million vacant houses because we have, you know, 70 incremental of 70 million families, incremental of 70 million houses. So most researchers would that would view myself too before would view the urbanization China is the rural residents go into the urban area to live to work, migrant workers, a same a something like, like that. They could bring the family. They could do them themselves first and then bring the family together. But urbanization in China is quite, it's quite complicated actually. It turns out that that's not the only reason. That's not even half of the reason, half of the people. Some change their hukou from rural to non-rural. Okay, so that's one. Some relocate to urban areas and some never moved, but their areas are changed, are relabeled from rural to urban. So I call this, I call them, we call redefined migration versus uh, relocating migration. So 11% of the population are reclassified as urban. They brought 38 million units of housing. So 30 million units of rural housing now become urban housing. So to summarize, is uh, we calculated how many houses 
they have brought in 38 million units to the logical that yes we did over we did build lots of houses uh, lots of them and those houses are sold are sold but they believe the number they believe lots of people will come because there's to buy houses lots of rural residents come to the urban area to buy houses they somehow believe that will be the reason but the houses are sold to actually people own second for investment purpose if you can use the data to construct the quarterly vacancy rate index uh, for different cities, because as I learned from uh, Bill Witten's textbook, so the vacancy rate, we can then calculate the absorption uh, period in the, in, mar on the, in the market. So using how many months is need to absorb those vacant units. So that's a measure we always use to predict future housing price change.